Hi, I'm Jen Long, Creative Director at Sizzix, and I'm at scrapbook.com today, and I'm about to share with you my brand new collection called In Bloom. In Bloom is a set of coloring cards, and coloring cards that are sold with sentiment stamps. Coloring has been a huge trend in the creative industry, but I kind of wanted to bring it more into the die cutting industry and see how that would go. So what I did is I have these coloring cards and I also designed stamps and framelits that work with them. So we're gonna do a quick little demo and I'm gonna show you how to get the most out of this coloring card system. So we can see that these stamps are attached to the front, that's because they're sold together. And if we just flip through this book, these are all actually hand-drawn designs that base themselves around succulents and florals and cactuses. And this paper is heavy duty weight paper, so it's quite durable. You can use watercolor, alcohol ink, marker, anything that you like and your paper will stay um, firm. And I did want to point out in the beginning of the coloring card book, if you open it up, you can see that we have some project examples for you here and we list the stamps and the framelits that work with the book so it's easy for you to reference. And I also included a color palette page. Sometimes people find coloring a little overwhelming, they're not quite sure what palettes to pick. So this gives you just a little bit of color wheel education and just helps you kind of choose whatever palette you want for whatever particular mood that you're in. So I'm gonna flip through my book and I'm gonna pick out this coloring card to use today. So like I mentioned, this can stand um, water, color, alcohol, ink, and all of that. I'm just gonna use a little bit of colored pencils today just to get it going and um, show you how easy it is. When I start coloring, I usually wanna start with my lightest color and just kind of put an overall base over you know, whatever design I'm coloring in. After I get this kind of medium tone base going, then I'm gonna go ahead and put in some shadows and some um, just different color tones in there just to kind of build up a little more volume. So I'm gonna just go ahead and pick kind of a darker color and right in the middle, I'm gonna put that darker color and then I'm just gonna blend it out. It's very, very easy to blend colored pencils and make it look like it was a lot more complicated than it really, really was. So if we kind of just follow that fashion and get your whole entire card colored, you're gonna hopefully end up with something that looks like this. So now that our coloring card is colored, I wanna show you how to use stamps and framelits to help build up dimension on this card. So there is a stamp and framelit set that actually mimics the drawings that I created on here. So I have my stamp block all set up here. This is my Sizzix ink block. I love this because of the little gridded features it has on here. So it's really quite easy to line everything up. I'm also gonna use my Sizzix ink, and I have my mini stamper secret weapon all ready to go, and that is gonna ensure that I get a perfect ink transfer every single time. So I'm gonna flip this over and just get my impression on there. And you can already see that this dragonfly is the same little dragonfly on the coloring card, and this little rose bunch is the same little rose bunch that you have here. Well, why would you wanna do that? I wanted to do that so I could add dimension to it, get a little more 3D action to it and help it be more of an interactive card front. So I'm gonna come over here to my Big Shot machine and I'm gonna use our signature stamp framelit system. If you're not familiar with stamps and framelits, we already stamped our image and now this framelit is designed to fit right outside the stamped image. Of course, I'm using my magnetic platform and that's gonna help keep my little framelit right in place so it's not gonna scoot around. And then I'm gonna go ahead and place this one around this flower. And you can kind of already see um, where it's gonna cut out and what I'm gonna end up with after I roll it through my Big Shot machine. I love these glitter cutting pads. It just makes using your Big Shot machine a little more fun. So I can go ahead and bring these over here just to show you what we ended up with. We ended up with a separate dragonfly and a separate little flower swag. Now I don't wanna to waste too much time coloring, so I'm gonna grab these pre-cut pieces that I already have right here and just show you. This is kinda of how they ended up after they were colored. And I have my card base right here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some pop dots and this is what's gonna give us a little bit of dimension to it and help it kind of stand out. 
I'm gonna put a couple pop dots on the back of this flower swag, and then I'm gonna line it up exactly on top of the coloring card flower swag. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do our friend the dragonfly here. And then we can just line up that dragonfly right on top of the other one. And now you can see how you get just a little bit more dimension added to your card front. I do wanna go ahead and use these nice sentiment stamps that come with the set. These are sold with the set. And I wanna go ahead and stamp a thank you right in there. Most of the coloring pages in the book actually have a space that allows for you to stamp your sentiments. So if we just flip through here again, you can see there's a nice label shape, uh, there's a nice opening here. All these were designed with the intention of you guys being able to um, stamp your own sentiments and be able to personalize just what your coloring card fronts are gonna say. So I have my thank you on my ink block. We'll just ink this up again. Come back to our secret weapon. I'm just gonna line this up right in the middle and go ahead and put my sentiment on there. Thank you. Now all you would need to do is go ahead and adhere it to a card base and that gives you your completed card front. However, I did wanna take this a little bit further and um, experiment with making these into postcards. So I do have a stamp set in this collection in Bloom, and it's actually a postcard set. This gives you all the elements you need to turn the back of your card into an actual mailable postcard. So let's go ahead and take this one. I'm gonna use one that doesn't have any of the dimensional pieces adhered on it so I can flip it over. So if you are gonna turn it into a postcard, you might wanna do that first before you color the front side and add anything else to it. So all the pieces I included on this stamp set really let you actually physically turn it into a postcard. So the first thing are these little address lines. Just ink that up and get that going right there. And next I'm going to pick my stamp. So that's just right here. And again, all of the elements in the actual postcard stamp set match the elements and floral designs that are in the Emblem coloring cards. So you're actually um, just accentuating all the designs that I've already drawn in the book with these little finishing touches. And of course you can go and color in these as well and kind of match your front palette. I really like this um, antique looking postcard phrase that I have. Stamp that up. I'm gonna put that right there. And lastly, I'm gonna put a little flower swag in the corner. And I do have an example of this kind of colored in in a variety of different ways. So you can see how you can color in your postcard. Or an example here is how you can actually use it on the outside of an envelope as well. The last thing I did wanna to touch on, although there are stamps and framelits that are designed to mimic the drawings in here, those stamps and framelits really are strong enough to stand alone on themselves and craft with. So I have a couple projects here that we made just using the stamps and framelits. And you can see we didn't use a coloring card at all. We just created some succulent and flower um, tags and birthday cards. They each come with a phrase. So again, you can make a thank you card, you can make a birthday card with these same stamps and framelits that go with In Bloom. You don't need the cards, but they do work really nicely together. Now we're gonna take a look at my cactus fold-along card. A fold-along card is a uniquely shaped kind of pop-out gate fold card, but it has this uh, label shape right here that actually pops in and out and you don't even need any adhesive. There's a really special folding technique that you use to make this um, card base. You can tell it's pretty extended and pretty long. Typically you think that would be an expensive card base, but let me show you the die and show you just how easy it is. So let's take a look here at our die and everything that comes with this particular cactus fold along card. This is our card base and you can tell it's only about half of the card if you look at it right next to each other. And there's a folding technique that we used in that to give you, I like to say you get twice of the card for half of the die. 
but I also have all these layering pieces and even a little phrase. The phrase looking sharp is included, as well as various different mouth smiles, different eyeballs, a bow, some sunglasses. So you really have the ability to turn this into quite the character. So the folding technique for a fold along card is simple. All you need to do is start with your Big Shot machine and your magnetic platform. And you're gonna take a piece of paper that is six by 12 inches long, and you're gonna fold that right in half. After you fold that in half, you're gonna lay that down on your platform. So this is the fun part about fold along cards. You're actually gonna cut a little bit over the fold. So you're gonna get an extended card base with only using half of your die. So this is the important part, you guys. You have to just put your die just a hair over the fold. Anytime you say cut on the fold, that's what we mean. And you can see that's just a little bit over the fold to make sure that it's all connected when you undo it. I'm gonna finish off my sandwich and put this through my Big Shot machine. Everybody knows the cracking sound is totally normal. Now this is the really fun part. When you take away your excess paper and remove your die cut, you unfold it to reveal this completely extended card base. Once you're at this point, there are little score lines that are indicated in here. So we're just gonna kind of pinch and fold along all of these score lines. And you might tell when we take a look at the die again, the score lines start at the top and they kind of skip and they continue at the bottom. I had to do it that way so I could nest all of these other cool shapes in there for you guys to have. So you're gonna have a little point on your card base where you see the score line at the top and you see at the bottom, you just kind of pinch those along and if you're having any trouble at all getting those to match up, you just match up your bottom corners or you match up your top flowers. Everything on here is symmetrical so it's quite easy to match up. And you just make yourself a little um, like an accordion fold. You just go up, down, up, down, up, down, and you continue to fold along all of those score lines until you have this shape. And this is gonna be your card base. So your next step is going to be to cut out your little label shape that goes in the middle. I'm gonna pick yellow for this card. Of course, the label shape is included but I'm also gonna to start to cut out all the other pieces I want to embellish the card. And something fun that I wanna do is I actually wanna cut out a piece to decorate these side panels. So I'm gonna take my card here and I'm just gonna lay this right on there. And I'm just gonna cut this out normally without using a fold. And that's gonna help me get a piece that I can adhere on the side panels. It's probably easier to show how that looks. So again, we take out our excess paper, take away our die, and you can see we have our score lines again. So if we take a look at this finished card, we can see where if we just trim along these score lines, you can actually have decorative panels. And these panels really help break up the different levels of the fold along card and I think they help accentuate how the label shape pops out of it. So if I were to kind of trim both of those, I would end up with these two pieces that look like this. And again, you don't have to do the inside pieces, you could do the outside pieces, you could do the middle background. There's a lot of different varieties of ways you could decorate your back panels. So all I'm gonna do is put a little bit of adhesive on my card base right where I want those panels to go. And then you can see it just layers perfectly on top. All the little points match up with each other. And you can already see that that kind of starts to add a little bit more dimension and makes your fold along card base just a little bit more interesting. Okay, now back to cutting out our label shape. I'm gonna cut out a yellow label shape What's cool about having all the space on my platform is I can actually cut out my other pieces too. So I'm gonna cut out, I'm feeling kind of like a sunglasses mood today. It's a little warm outside. And I think I'm also gonna cut out just the straight 
mouth line. I have three different options for mouth, but I'm, I'm gonna just go with a straight line today. And for my bow, I'm gonna pick pink and get my little bow going. And lastly, I wanna cut out my phrase. My phrase here, you can tell it's quite intricate. That's a really intricate phrase. So what do I wanna use on that? I wanna use some Sizzix adhesive sheets. And that's really gonna help make adhering this cutout die piece a lot easier to my label shape. So these are our adhesive sheets. And all you do is you peel this off. It says peel here. And this turns any piece of paper into a sticker and then you can die cut it. So again, we're just gonna put that right on the back of my piece of paper. I'm gonna rub it down. I'm gonna put it on my platform and then I'm gonna put my die looking sharp, which is my clever little phrase for this die design right on top of it. So look at that, I have all these things all ready to cut out in one pass. I'm gonna finish up my sandwich and send this on through. Now I can actually just bring this over here and start to build up the pieces to my card. So we have our label shape. So what's cool about the label shape is it actually fits into these slots here. People ask me all the time, why is there a gaping hole in the middle of your card and what are these slots for? That hole is so your label shape fits right in there. You don't even need any adhesive to make it stick. They're perfectly sized to fit in there. And now you can see you have an interactive three-dimensional pop-out label shape that's really perfect to help your sentiment stand out. And I'm just, again, gonna add a little bit of adhesive and get this going. And you can really see the character kind of start to develop, especially when you're using the different varieties of shapes that were included. So you start to get your sunglasses, your kind of little attitude mouth. We're gonna get our little pink bow. And then lastly, I'm gonna take this phrase looking sharp. I actually wanted to kind of create a shadow with this phrase. So I did cut it out twice, once before. Both sheets have adhesive on the back of it, the Sizzix adhesive. And I do wanna make this phrase stand out even more. So I'm just gonna add some distress ink to it. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit. And I'm just gonna run it along the bottom, along the edge, along the top. Again, being a three-dimensional card and being interactive is, is the main value of this card base. So just anything to accentuate that is just gonna make it even more impressive. So I'm just gonna peel my Sizzix adhesive sheet right off the back of this phrase. And I'm gonna stick that phrase right on down there. I know that's gonna be my shadow, that's gonna be my back piece. And then I have one more piece. If you ever have trouble getting the Sizzix adhesive sheets out, instead of trying to pick it, all you do is kind of just do it with the pad of your finger and look at how easily that comes off. But imagine trying to add adhesive to all these small intricate pieces on this phrase. This is just a really easy way of getting that done. Now I'm just gonna layer this just a slight measurement to the right so it looks like I have a nice shadow. So we have our finished fold along card. We have our second cutout panels to help give it more dimension. We have our pop-out label shape, and we have our nice little character built up with our attitude mouth and our sunglasses and our bow. And this is our looking sharp fold-along card.